Good evening YouTube and the internet. Before I start the video, I just want to give a shout out to Sam Lucas. Uh, Samit is his uh, YouTube channel. Uh, he's the owner of Otaku Garage and he's hooked me up with these awesome parts. So we've got a spool con rods and we have our pistons. Now, um, I'm a bit of a control freak so I always like to double check everything. Um, so yeah, I'm going to check the dimensions on these items to make sure they are what they say on the box. Um, I've got no doubt that Sam's guys have packed the right stuff and done the right thing, but um, these things can happen. People are human. And also, it can happen from the manufacturer as well. So, if you ever do get parts that aren't right, don't always assume it's the guy that sold it to you. He could have got them wrong from, from the fabricator or manufacturer as well. So, thanks Sam for my parts. And uh, let's get started. Good evening, YouTube and the internet. Today, I'm going to measure up my rods, make sure I got what I ordered, make sure they're in spec before sending them to the machine shop and then once I've done that I'm going to repeat the process on the pistons so uh, also I'm aware that the, the low light footage isn't very good it gets a bit grainy uh, so I'll send another light up over the bench try and help that uh, the cameras fairly new so I'm not going to buy another one in a real hurry I want to spend that money on car parts but uh, it's something I'll think about in the future so yeah let's get to it alright YouTube and the internet rods they should be the same as the factory ones so I'm just going to use the factory service manual check those This seems to be my favourite piece of reading material. Oh, here we go. Piston pin. Conrod small end diameter. Is 21.06. Now, I've got the camera in a shitty spot. Um, that's too small for my... Uh, ball gauge to measure so I'm going to do those with the verniers I have slipped them onto the pin they seem pretty good but I'll have a bit of a double check now oh, it's stuck I'll get the other ones oh, battery's getting a bit faint on that let's not waste the battery so we're looking for uh Conrod small end diameter piston grade zero or piston grade one. Okay, so there's a one and a, a zero and a one grade. Uh, twenty one point zero zero six basically to twenty one. With all my engine everywhere, I've got I'm out of space. I nearly did this upstairs in the kitchen. So it's wrapped in a basically a grease proof paper with some oil on the rod to stop it corroding. Give you a nice close look at it. Alright, there you are. Shiny. So the diameter we're looking at is this one. That says it's too big. I probably need to read the spool information. 
before making any decisions on that. Let's measure a pen. So piston. Bloody packaging. Like that, and here's a pin. So it's saying that this is slightly bigger as well, so perhaps information here or perhaps all the aftermarket guys are running a slightly bigger pin and they all know what they do so at the same note here that is snug very snug so I'll go away and read about that and make sure that that's okay there's no point measuring that anymore back in here. So the pin is oiled as well already. Not a lot but there's some on it. Put a piston back. And let's go to the big end. Let's just take a preliminary measurement with this. something like it but it's not quite right well I've not measured it it's not quite right that doesn't mean it's not right hmm. there's no oil hole in these piston in these rods anywhere there's a hole inside the top but Nowhere else. Another thing I have to look at. See if I can figure out if that's supposed to be there. I assumed there would be an oil hole on that. So, <coughs> let me get the. Okay. Lots of light reading to do. Um, this is the technical data on the pistons. So, I'll give that a read. And I will get back to you. Oh, sure, I zero at that. Be it. Off. So quickly, um, diameter of the piston, eighty-six point five. What I ordered. Now, there are nine point five to one compression ratio, and I could probably do some fancy maths to figure out if that's exactly right. However. What I can do is compare it to the factory one. Here's our factory piston. Here's our aftermarket one. And as you can see, this crown is much higher. I think that's called a crown. Um, so I'm inclined to believe that that is a 9.5 to 1 compression ratio. Could be 9. I'll see if I can find some dimensions on Ross Racing's website to confirm the crown height and stuff like that but it's certainly not uh, the standard 8.5 8.5? I think it's 8.5 to 1 so yeah piston's the right diameter and it appears to be a high compression piston now another thing I can show you is the old rods factory rods compared to the new rods so you can see how much broader they are that way and then we can put them on edge and you can
can see they're even slightly thicker. This is the oil squirter I'm talking about. The oil hole. Probably can't see it. It's in there. Now what that does is that squirts oil up on the underside of the piston um, to help cool it down and, and to lubricate it on the underside of the combustion chamber effectively. The other side has the oil squirter in the block squirting up at it. Uh, no, they appear to be on the same side because there's the cutout for the squirter. Maybe I should double check that. But you can see the bigger rods. Now I'm going to have a look, like I said, a bit of a closer look at what Spool say about these rods. They're the same length. Um, and I'll just yeah, do some quick double checking measurements. Make sure they are, well, for an RB25. That's the only thing I can check, that they match the existing ones. Uh, as far as they're supposed to and where they're different that they're supposed to be different apart from that there's not much else I can do uh, so I'll do that now so instead of pissing about with these I've gone to the precision tooling so I haven't double checked whether or not these are supposed to be different yet but let's have a quick look this is telling me factory rod pin diameter is 20.993 millimeters. So careful. I nearly dropped this before. Measurement is uh, zero point eight two five. I gotta remember how to measure this. It goes around to twenty, doesn't it? Yes, yeah, so sir. Eight two five. Six nine eight two six nine. No, that's I'm a digit short there. Let me write it down. Always makes it easier. Zero inches point eight. Each of those is twenty five. That's 25 markings around there. To six. So that's one additional marking. Nine. Oh no, that's the correct amount of digits. Uh, now. Get out the old discombobulator. And convert that to metric. See what it has to say. Probably overthinking it. Eight two six nine times twenty five point four. It's twenty one point zero zero three two. Which is pretty much spot on. Twenty one is the target. So the pin is correct on that one. Now I've got no reason to believe that they're not all correct. So all I'm doing is confirming that I got what I ordered. So we know that is correct diameter. We know it's got the tall crown. I'll Google that right now. We know the pin's the correct diameter, therefore we know the hole in this is the correct diameter. So <clears throat> it's just a case of double checking the rod. So some of you might be thinking why 
why would you put a high compression piston in a boosted engine? Because the traditional thought process is uh, to reduce the compression, run thicker head gaskets and the like to decrease the natural compression to allow for more boost. The reason you do that is to stop it knocking or pinging, you know, detonation. Um, runs the 85. It's got excellent anti-detonation properties, much better than the traditional fuels that those methods were developed to, to deal with. And also, ultimately, I want more mid-range power. So if, when this thing's getting tuned, and it starts knocking at 28 psi. I'll wind it back, and I'll live with whatever I've got. But what I'll have is much better response um, than you know. It's the whole concept. The smaller turbo, it's not a small turbo, medium-sized turbo, to make the sort of power I'm looking at, running high boost. Now that's uh, it's common in motorsports. Look at WRC. They got small turbos running high boost. Formula One. Small turbo high burst. Um, that gives you more torque. So the more torque you got, um, the less res you need to make the same horsepower numbers. So I'm happy for it to fall short of the ultimate, the, the big number at the end, as long as I got the torque in the mid range. Um, it'll have plenty of power. I'm not concerned about that. It had enough to, before, to be honest. If you haven't seen it. Go and watch me trying to drive the thing at Jack Nats. I'm all over the place. So, um, yeah, it's, it's got more than enough to light up third gear pretty much in a straight line with semi slicks on and up to temp. So, um, yeah, it's about delivering that power, but I want more power to deliver. And if you're gonna if you're gonna pull the engine out and strip it, and you've got three broken engines and you're gonna rebuild one, then in my case, it makes sense to just, just rebuild it better and max out what I can. So that's the idea behind that. Now, this spool conrod. I'm going to do some Googling right now. Because I don't see a bit of paper in the box like this one for the pistons. So this has got all the measurements for all the pistons, weights, diameters, uh, there's all the diameters, multiple locations, that's all the weights, and that's the spec sheet. So I know it's this is what I've got because I've just measured it and I've got the same numbers. Whereas the rods, no spec sheet. This is one on the bottom of the box, under all the rods. No, oh no. I lifted the bottom one up and all the foam beans fell in the hole. Stick these other ones back in the box so they can't slide off the table. So I'm imagining spool rods have a spec sheet on the website I can look at. And as far as and as far as the measurement on the um, that pin diameter seems pretty snug and those vanier calipers have never been overly accurate so uh, I'll have to trust the machine shot to measure that my, my ball gauge won't get in there and similar with the big end measurement I just took but let me just uh, double check what they say about that oil hole or the lack thereof on their spec sheet So, quick Google, the spool website just says 51 and 21, and that's pretty much the measurements I got. To give you an idea, the, um, the clearance for the pin at the top is uh, 5 microns, so zero gap, effectively, which is pretty much what I measured, um, within the realms of how accurate those vernies can be. And I'll get the machine shop to just double check those measurements. If the clearances are a little bit big or a little bit small, that'll dictate uh, oil selection and run-in and warm-up procedures. That's all. 
Uh, now, the rod itself, um, what was I checking? Conrod, large end diameter 51. 51 is what it says. So, um, yeah, they're the right, they're the right rods, and they're good to go. So everything's ready for the machinist. Um, I'm just trying to think. I've got the crank collar up there, so I've got to get all my shit unpacked. I'll probably get it there Friday, uh, which is probably when this will go up. Um, and then I've got to play the waiting game on. Uh, waiting for the machining to be done then we can start putting it together uh, what's the last thing I had to check oh I'm gonna do a quick look see in the forums I lots of people use these spool rods uh, just about the oil hole um, just see what I can find and see if anyone's asked that question before I maybe ask it myself and uh, find out if there's any ups or downsides to not running that oil hole at all like at all there's no oil hole whatsoever yeah so there's sort of nothing to relief release relieve the oil from within the bearing at all apart from it making its way out the side which might be a good thing might be a bad thing it might be easier to make them slightly less round and have a hole so you don't have pressure surge inside it when it's running on the oil film because that small film is not going to compress so if, if things are out around uh, it'll create massive pressure spikes in the oil but I'm just you know thinking off the top of my head there's a small hole on the top I suppose that's for lubrication of the, the pin I assume it is uh, and there seems to be some sort of wear material in here a golden color uh, because that's a uh, well it's a bearing surface so I don't know if that's harder or softer because you know I didn't design these but it is uh, it's what it says on the box so I'm happy that's all I'm doing tonight um, not very exciting again and I will uh, I'll get back to you once the machining's done a couple of weeks time I do have some other things I need to do which I could probably film uh, there's plenty of stuff to do on the car it's just been a case of prioritizing the engine uh, any mm -hmm. money I, excuse me any money I spent on other stuff would have delayed getting the engine done so um, I've held off on all the other work on the car purely because it's less it's got a lower priority I, if I, I can do nothing else on that car whatsoever put an engine in it and take it racing and it'll be fast uh, the stuff I want to do is going to have minor improvements to the to the handling characteristics of the car a little bit of aero work diff um, we've got a CAS two way there and some general tidying up as well some bits and pieces that can come out but all of that was you know it can wait so yeah now I'm gonna have to arrange all these pistons so you can uh, see that pretty thumbnail I put up there just finished my investigation into the oil hole in the rod um, spool rods don't have them nitto rods don't have them lots of people making really big horsepower I've used those in all RBs they're not required, so that's fine. Um, tip top.